What is up guys? Welcome to game one of the NPL tryouts tournament. This is for NPL miners, of course, and today we are against baby Eric and the Seattle Onyx. Uh, he's got a pretty scary team. We'll go over it really quickly. You should be seeing it come up on your right. Uh, he, it's made up of Magirna, Necrozma, Salamence, uh, which is which has Z crystal uh, eligibility, Crocodile, Shaman, Tentacruel, Mega Pidgeot, and Cobalion, which is another Z user. So, uh, pretty scary team, uh, to say the least. It's uh, it's pretty threatening. And um, by the way, a timestamp should be coming up on your screen if you want uh, on your screen. Excuse me, if you want to skip the team builder portion of this. Uh, for those of you on PC, it's also in the uh, in the description down below. There's going to be a timestamp, so you can just skip to that. Uh, I'm leaving the uh, the time on screen for those of you who are on mobile and need to scroll through. So let's go over the team builder really quickly. The first Pokemon we have here is kindly named by. Tom and the San Jose Sharpedos from the G GBA. He gave me the name Raigeki, uh, Raigeki, excuse me, for uh, Thunderous T. And uh, this week, uh, this week, this game, because this is going to be uh, occurring quite a few times this week, actually, we're going to be uploading um, for this uh, tryout tournament. But for this game, we are bringing Assault Vest Thunderous Therian with max special defense. And I think Showdown actually messed up my spadef. It should have been higher. Uh, I wonder if that's going to have affected in the game at all. I have to run some Calyx later, but right now it's it's supposed to be 252 uh, Spadef. Let me see if anything else got messed up real quick. Uh, no, that's fine. That's fine. That looks fine. That's also fine. So I think it's just thunderous. Okay, good. Uh, so we are max special defense assault vest uh, with volt absorb, of course. Uh, this is my primary answer to his Mega Pidgeot as well as Magirna. I can switch into either one very well. Having Volt Absorb means that he can't gain Switch Initiative off of me. Uh, with Magirna, he can't go for Volt Switch uh, as freely as he wants to, or else he's going to be giving me back health. Thunderbolt is to hit the majority of his team. As you see, it hits Magirna, Necrozma, Salamence, uh, Tentacruel, and uh, Mega Pidgeot, as well as Cobalion, all pretty hard. Uh, he does have an immunity in Crocodile and a resist in Shaman, but everything else takes a lot of damage. Uh, Hidden Power Ice is for those two resists that I just mentioned crocodile and shaman i also have u-turn on this set to be able to gain momentum off of them uh we are a gentle nature uh because i didn't want to lower my attack i wanted to have as, uh, as much power as possible behind knockoff and u-turn and this thing wasn't going to be checking any physical attackers anyway on his team so that's why i decided to go with that nature and of course knockoff is there so that i'm able to get rid of items uh in my test game with jar he actually brought an assault vest magirna to counter my thunder Asterian, which is funny uh and having knocked off that assault vest earlier would have really helped uh, in our test game, so uh, that's why I have that on there, and it also hits Necrozma for super effective damage. It's able to get rid of items on Tentacruel, such as Black Sludge or Life Orb, depending on what he wanted to run. Uh, Shaman would lose its item, uh, Crocodile, Salamence, pretty much anything. So that's why I decided to pack knockoff for switches, mostly. Uh, and, like I mentioned before, U-turn. So this is the set, max special attack, because I want my Thunderbolts to hit as hard as possible. Sorry about this on screen. Now let's move over to our next Pokemon, Jarachi, the, uh, named after our good friend Jar, the Jarachi uh, Choice Scarf. Uh, this is going to be uh, the... I don't, I don't know. Uh, this is going to be one of the only times that I bring Choice Scarf on Jarachi, but uh, it's, it's a very good set in this game. As you guys can see, he doesn't have a very good Iron Head switch in outside of uh, Tentacruel and maybe even Cobalion, but both of those get hit pretty hard with Heart Stamp. So the dual stab on Jirachi is really good. This thing is, is really good for cleaning up late game. Against him, if I'm able to weaken everything, Iron Head or Heart Stamp can sweep. Ice Punch is there specifically for the Salamence, but it's also super effective coverage for Crook and Shaman uh, if they want to switch in on me, if they're physically defensive. Of course, Crook gets uh, Intimidate, so that's a valid reason to want to switch in on Jirachi. It could be running Rocky Helmet for all I know. Ice Punch also has that 20% chance to freeze, so that's really cool. And then U-Turn, of course, to gain momentum if I know that he doesn't want to switch as stay in. So I have my, my I have my U-Turn in core right here between Regeki and Jarachi. And next up we have Genesis the Flygon. Now this uh, this set I tailored specifically to take on his physical threats, uh, such as uh, sometimes Salamence, not really, uh, but mainly it was for Cobalion and Crocodile. I didn't want those things sweeping me. Cobalion is a huge threat to me, especially that it can run Z moves. Uh, so it can break through anything that it wants to realistically. All it would need would be... Um, would be close combat, uh, earthquake, and iron head, and he could actually sweep my entire team outside of thunderous T, and he can easily weaken that with his team. So Cobalion was a huge, huge threat that I needed a check to, and Flygon is going to be that check. Genesis right here, kindly named by Johnny. Uh, it's a reference to a Genesis song called uh, "I Can't Dance," which is really funny because Flygon can dance now; it can use Dragon Dance, so. 
That's, uh, that's a really cool reference right there. But we have Earthquake on this set because I am uh, faster than defensive variants of Magirna. Uh, anything but Timid Max Speed, uh, I, I should be faster than. Necrozma, if it's a defensive variant, I'm faster than that. Same thing with Crook. Um, Shaman, I don't want to stay in on anyway. Tentacruel, uh, if he's not running any speed, I'm faster than him. Even if he's running uh, 24 speed, which is what... Um, which is what Tentacruel uh, runs on its standard set. I just wanted to be able to uh, to outspeed that, basically, in case he had a little bit of speed investment for whatever reason. I wanted to be able to outspeed him uh, and get off an Earthquake. Uh, and then there's Cobalion. So this thing hits Cobalion extremely hard. It's able to wear down Crocodile um, gradually because I have Roost. I'm able to heal up as Crocodile is not in front of me. Uh, and uh, even if he gets off an Intimidate, I'm still chipping away at him. And then Defog is there because I didn't want to get uh, Spike stacked. He does have a Toxic Spiker and a very good Stealth Rocker in Crocodile. I wanted to make sure that Rocks didn't go up because my most important member of this game is going to be Entei. And I got to make sure that it doesn't take any damage. Entei can put on a ton of pressure on his team as long as his Tentacruel isn't defensive it can pretty much freely fire off um, sacred fires and risk burns on stuff and that's it's amazing it, it pretty much gets kills for free uh, next up we have at T Wavulator 60 this is named after our good friend Greg uh, who is also the um, GBA fan discord at admin which I didn't know uh, until I got there which is really funny but anyway uh, we have the very very max or almost max physical defense max HP uh, Clefable with Unaware, I wanted Unaware because I wanted uh, something to be able to switch in on, let's say, Work Up Pidgeot, um, Swords Dance, Cobalion, not die from it, of course. Uh, pretty much anything. Call Mine, Magirna, if, if it was Call Mine for whatever reason. I wanted Unaware, and um, I knew that Magikarp wasn't going to be a huge help this game. Uh, turns out that it would have been a pretty big help, but we'll get into that when we get to the battle. Uh, I have Ice Beam on here because I want to be able to check Salamence. Uh, also, he cannot knock me out with a, uh, a boosted Iron Tail um, from Steelium Z. He can't knock me out with that. So that's why I'm unaware as well, so that if he gets up, if he gets up to plus one, it doesn't matter. Uh, I'm able to Thunder Wave him and then pretty much beat him with something else. Or I just Ice Beam him and leave him in range of one of my two priority Pokemon being Entei and Mega Absol. So that's why I'm running Ice Beam. Thunder Wave is there with that speed investment so that I can outspeed max speed Tentacruel after... Uh, I get off the T-Wave uh, and get up rocks and he would have to spin continuously and then he's risking me moonlighting in front of him. If he's not running a poison move, uh, then he can't really hit me too hard either. So that's why that's there. And of course, moonlight is uh, is mandatory with unaware. So that's why that's there instead of soft boiled. Next up, we got probably the most important member to this team, Entei. It's the biggest wall breaker that I have uh, against him. Max attack, adamant, 196 speed. This is just enough speed. Uh, to outspeed his base 80, which I believe is... Uh, well, Necrozma hits 79. I can't remember why I was base 80. I really can't remember, to, <laughs> like, why I was outspeeding 284 speed. Uh, but anyway, this is uh, this is fine. Uh, it, was, uh, it was more than enough speed, actually. But uh, I didn't need any more bulk either, because this thing was coming in. As long as Stealth Rocks weren't up and I was coming in on a slower threat, I was pretty much getting a kill every single time with this thing. Sacred Fire does so much damage to everything on his team except for Tentacruel. That's why I have Bulldoze on there, also to lower its speed in case it was a max speed variant. Uh, the Choice Band is there because, of course, sheer power. Flare Blitz is an alternative to Sacred Fire in case I run out of PP for whatever reason. And then also Extreme Speed. I needed Extreme Speed on this set because Salamence was a huge threat to me and I needed something that was able to take it out. Uh, and that would be Entei uh, after rock damage and after one other hit from pretty much anything on my team. So he couldn't freely set up in front of me unless I let him uh, was basically the idea that I had there. So, yep, that's that's Entei for you. Uh, pretty straightforward. And finally, we have Pandora. Glad Rob named Entei, obviously, and Pandora was named... Uh, who was it again that named this? I'm sorry, I can't remember right now. Uh, I'll leave uh, I'll leave a comment or something with, uh, with their name uh, and uh, when I figure it out. But this set is specifically tailored to pretty much beat his entire team, honestly. Uh, this Absol set, with that speed, hits just above 346. Uh, I believe it gets to 347 with max speed, so it's able to outspeed max speed Cobalion. Uh, I can get off a Fire Blast on that thing. I also have Fire Blast for his Magirna, uh, as well as his Shaman. It's the strongest moves that I can hit them all with. Ice Beam is there, again, specifically for the Salamence, but also for the Crocodile, which is a pretty good switch, typically to Absol, because of the Intimidate. So I'm able to, to kill that thing uh, with two hits, of course. Uh, knock Off is there so that I could knock off the Necrozma and the Tentacruel. Uh, Necrozma could easily be running a Cobra Berry, but I don't care. It still does a lot of damage with this set. As you can see, we're running 160 attack, 140 special attack. The 140 special attack was to make sure that I would do enough to Salamence, uh, well, to knock it out. 
uh, and also that I was doing a good chunk of damage to Crocodile. Uh, if he wasn't running a max HP variant, then I would be able to very, come very close to knocking it out. Pretty much always a knockout after U-turn, so that's why that's like that. And uh, finally, Sucker Punch is on there because I needed a secondary form of priority in case his Salamence did set up at any point in the game. I needed to get off a little bit of chip damage on it before I went into Entei to E-Speed kill it. So that's why that's like that. And Sucker Punch is just really good in general for revenging. Uh, it's also really good for hitting the Mega Pidgeot. Now, I didn't have a really great answer to Mega Pidgeot as you guys will see in the game. So uh, it was my Thunder T, but I, I tailored Thunder T to take on Magearna as well. So uh, yeah, about that. Anyway, let's get into the game. You guys are going to see how this went down, and we will be right back. All right, guys, and we are back. We are here with the game. As you can see, my opponent brought Magearna, Crocodile, Salamence, Tentacruel, Mega Pidgeot, and Necrozma. Now, Shaman, I didn't expect to come because I had Entei. I had so many things that could beat it uh, pretty easily, and it didn't really have super effective coverage for anything on my team other than Keldeo, which didn't have a great matchup this game anyway. So, yeah. Um... But I was actually kind of surprised that he didn't bring Cobalion, because Cobalion did really well against me. Uh, so did Crook, but I think that Cobalion with a, du a double dance set would have been able to absolutely shred through me uh, if I didn't have this Flygon specifically for it. But the fact that he br didn't bring Cobalion meant that Flygon could focus more on Crocodile and Necrozma rather than having to focus on Cobalion. So that's really good. Um, things I see right away, uh, he has the Mega Pidgeot, and I, <laughs> I really didn't prep enough for that thing. Uh, I really, I prep for his Magearna more than I prep for his uh, Mega Pidgeot, so maybe that'll be my downfall, but we'll see in a second. Let's get into the game. I decide to lead off with Thunder T as he leads off with his Crocodile. I don't want to risk this thing being faster than me. It might not be, but I do not want to stay in here. I'm just going to go into my physical wall, which is Flygon, as he actually also pulls a switch out into his Necrozma, and I'm going to go for the Dragon Claw uh, just to gauge the damage, and he's going to go for a Dark Pulse. As you can see, that doesn't do too much. I'm just going to go for another Dragon Claw because I want to bait him into thinking that it might be my only offensive move. He's now gonna go for Psy Shock, which does a little bit more than Pulse, but not enough to, to be scary. I'm now gonna go for the Roost. He reveals the Moonlight. He knows that he can't stay in on me because he's going to lose this war. I have more Roost than he has Moonlights. So I'm gonna go for the Earthquake this turn, thinking that he might switch into Magearna, but he actually goes into Crocodile. Great play on his part. And uh, I'm gonna Earthquake again, revealing that I'm actually faster than this thing with my speed. So I, not, I know he's not speed invested. He goes for Stealth Rocks, and I'm going to get rid of these things right away. I do not want them up on my side at all. We are going to get rid of them with Defog, and he's going to go for a knockoff, and this actually does 40%. Let me pause this real quick, guys. This was great information because this told me that he was max attack. Not adamant, but max attack. So I knew that he was probably a max HP, max attack variant because he didn't have enough speed to outspeed my Flygon, and my Flygon wasn't too speed invested either. It was only enough to beat Tentacruel if it had, like, 24 EVs. So... I know that this crook is max HP, max attack now, great information, good to know, uh, means that pretty much my entire team outspeeds it, uh, including Thunderous at this point, so I can always U-turn on this thing without having to fear getting knocked off, so that's really nice. Now I'm going to Roost right here, uh, As actually I'm going to Earthquake, excuse me, to get off a little more damage on this Crocodile, I need to keep it low, he's going to go for Stealth Rocks, and I'm going to get rid of them again. Uh, by going for a, another Defog, and he's going to switch out into his Salamence now. This is extremely threatening because this thing is in without rocks up, so I get very, very scared here. Now, I'm going to switch out into my Jirachi, and you might think this is a questionable play because he could easily just Dragon Dance up and then Earthquake me on the following turn, but one, he has to be max speed to speed tie me uh, at plus one, and I can always go for an Ice Punch and knock him out. If I win the speed tie, then he's gone. The other reason I went into Jirachi was because I had a feeling that he had Iron Tail and that he would go for it on this turn because it did a lot to Flygon. I was at minus two. He didn't risk me knocking him out with a, a Dragon Claw, and I didn't want to take damage on Clefable. So I predicted the Iron Tail, and I went into Jirachi, and wouldn't you know it, he has the Iron Tail, but he misses, so he doesn't get to see what kind of Jirachi I am right away. So this is really, really good for me. He has no idea what I am, so I'm just going to throw out a U-turn right here, I believe, as he's going to go out into his Necrozma, and this is my chance to bring in my Mega Absol and get it Mega Evolved. Now, I have already seen three of his moves. I don't know what the last one is, but I have a feeling he has something to hit my Mega Absol with. His moves so far are Dark Pulse and Psy Shock, so to my knowledge, he can't hit me. So I'm just going to go for a knockoff. He reveals, however, that one, he is Culberberry, so he's able to take this very well, and two, he's also packing X Scissor, so that was uh, kind of unexpected. I didn't expect him to bring specifically X Scissor, but I'm going to be able to go for another knockoff here and get rid of this Magearna's item, which turns out to be an Aka Berry, which was very good prep on Eric's part, uh, knowing that I would probably bring Fire Blast specifically f with uh, Absol to be able to hit this thing. 
Uh, but I'm not gonna stay in here. I'm actually gonna go out into my dedicated wall to this. Being Thundy, he's gonna go for the Volt Switch, so that was perfect. He doesn't know what I am still. And he's gonna go for, uh, I'm gonna go for a Thunderbolt first. Uh, I know that he's not Assault Vest now, so I can definitely take it. And as you can see, he goes for the Fleur Cannon. Now, this did 50% to me. Let's check real quick if my Thunderous was actually supposed to take that much. So we'll just move this over, because... On further inspection during this team builder, I noticed that I didn't have any uh, special defense EVs. Uh, it was just a positive nature, but I didn't have any spit F EVs. So uh, let's check Magirna with max special attack, Fleur Cannon. Uh, I'm not going to put uh, Modest or anything on here. I'm just going to go Fleur Cannon. So it's supposed to do 40 to 47 max. So uh, the fact that I didn't have EVs, he still got a low roll on it. Um, actually, hold on a second. Uh, gentle... Okay, so he probably wasn't max special attack. Uh, so his floor Cannon... He actually got a high roll on his floor Cannon, if that's the case. Or maybe he had some special attack investment, and it was a mid roll. Uh, but if I had that special defense investment, this 236 right here, then I would have only taken 36 to 42 percent. And this is actually quite important later in the game, as you guys will see. Let's just get back to this. And, uh, so I'm going to, uh, be able to take his next hit, no problem, because he's at minus two. So I'm going to predict him to switch out into his electric check, which is Crocodile, and I'm going to go for the U-turn. And this is going to get me some great momentum out into my Absol once again. And I have Ice Beam for this thing. I calced it up. I knew that it would kill from here, uh, because he was max attack. I'm assuming he was defensive. Uh, uh, with like a, a positive defense nature and now he's gonna go out into his Pidgeot and here's where I realized that I do not have an answer to this thing so I'm gonna go out into Thundee and it turns out even without those Spadef EVs this heat wave is gonna do nothing to me uh, I'm able to take that very well and he's forced to go for a U-turn now and I'm gonna get a free T-Bolt off on whatever he brings in so Necrozma is gonna come in and it's gonna go straight down to this or almost uh, it will go down to the next one and I know that he's not speed invested because of the way that he took the knockoff earlier even with the Cobra Berry now he's gonna go back into his Pidgeot and here's where that turn mattered uh, he wouldn't have been able to knock me out with his hurricane right here if I had those special defense EVs uh, so and he is able to knock me out because I didn't, as you can see from 16%. Uh, it was a roll. Um, actually, it, it was doing 17, even to my spread, it was doing 17 to 23. But I would have been a lot higher uh, in HP if he hadn't, uh, if I had the special defense EV. So we have Showdown to thank for that one. Thunny T goes down, unfortunately. But now it's looking like the Jirachi show. So I'm going to go into Jirachi. And here he makes a little bit of a play that I didn't really understand. He's going to go out into Tentacruel, predicting uh, an Iron Head. I could have easily gone for a Zen Headbutt or a Heart Stamp right there. And this damage from Iron Head and the fact that he has Black Sludge uh, reveals to me that he's a defensive variant. So I do not want to keep my Jirachi in here. If this thing gets burned, that's very, very bad for me. So I'm going to make a, a switch out into my Clefable, knowing that he probably won't go for a Poison move on this turn. He's going to go for the Scald, and he gets the burn. Unfortunately, uh, we are unaware, of course, we're not Magic Guard, and we don't have leftovers either, so we're not able to mitigate that. So I'm just going to focus on getting up my Stealth Rocks right now, because I need them up against his Salamence, or else I'm going to lose this game 100% of the time. I need to make sure they're up. So I'm going to go for Stealth Rocks. He's going to go for Sludge Bomb. He is faster than me, of course. I'm going to get up the rocks. And now, just in case he spins, I am going to go for the Thunder Wave, so I can get up the rocks on the following turn. But he's just going to Scald and knock me out. And now I can just go out into my Jirachi and Heart Stamp and try to flinch this thing down. He's actually going to pull a switch into his Magirna knowing that he can take the Heart Stamp. Now, I'm not too familiar with Magirna and everything that it gets. I'm going to go for another Heart Stamp here and I'm actually going to get a little bit of a higher roll and flinch him. So that's what I was going for was the flinch, of course. But this Iron Head, this Heart Stamp, excuse me, had a pretty good chance not to knock him out on the following turn. And I didn't want to risk not flinching him. On top of that, I didn't want to be in with Jirachi heart stamping and have him go into Salamence on the following turn and just set up for free. Because that would have been pretty bad. So I'm going to pull out a switch into my Flygon here. And it's a good thing I did because if I wouldn't have gotten that flinch, this pain split right here would have given him a ton of health back. And that would have been really bad for me. Uh, and instead, now I'm sitting with a Flygon, which is faster than his Magirna, uh, with Earthquake that can knock it out. And... Um, it's, it's pretty much free for me, so that's uh, that's that. Um, however, guys, I heavily contemplated going for a Dragon Claw right here. I really, really thought about it because if I go for an Earthquake and he switches out into a Salamence uh, on the Earthquake, then he can set up for free. I'm at minus one. Dragon Claw is not going to kill him, and then he's extremely threatening to my whole team. He does put himself in range of E-Speed by doing that, but then his Magirna stays healthy and I'm forced to switch my Entei out when his Magirna comes back in. So instead, uh, I decide, you know what, 
Screw it, I'm just clicking Earthquake, he might overpredict. Uh, I'll be able to knock out this Magirna, and if he goes into Salamence on the following turn and gets the Intimidate, I'll switch out into my Absol, threaten him, and go for the Sucker Punch uh, instead of the Ice Beam. Uh, put him in range of E-Speed, and that'll be fine. So I go for the Earthquake here, all good. But instead of going into Salamence, he makes the better play and goes into Mega Pidgeot. Now, I can't keep my flag on here because nothing else I have uh, can take a Hurricane too well except for Jirachi, but I don't want to risk him once again over-predicting and going for the Heat Wave because that would be very bad, especially if he got the burn. So I decide to stay in, and now I'm going to go back into my Jirachi, and I am just going to click Heart Stamp on this turn. It's not going to be a 2-hit KO, but I am going to get the flinch on the first one, and let's see if we can get the flinch on the second one. And Jorachi the God, <laughs> beautiful. So this thing goes down, and now he's going to make a play that I, uh, I don't completely agree with. He's going to go into his Tentacruel first. Now this thing is quite easily uh, to hit KO'd by my Heart Stamp. Not quite easily, but uh, as you can see, he actually breaks through the flinch on that turn, goes for a Scald, and he is not able to burn me with his Scald, luckily. So I am going to be able to take out the Tentacruel on the following turn. Now. This is not only to preserve differential, guys, this was my play against Jar in our test match. Every time his Salamence came in on rocks like this, I always went into Absol if it was alive, because it instantly puts pressure on his uh, Ments to not want to Dragon Nets again in case I'm Ice Beam. He doesn't know if I have Sucker Punch yet, because it's not necessarily that great against his team, and I haven't revealed Fire Blast either. So he has no idea what the rest of my set is. So I'm going to go out into Absol, and uh, he's going to go for the Dragon Dance, as expected. He has the Iron Tail with the Dragon Dance, exact set that Jar brought for me. And I'm just going to go for the Sucker Punch. He falls into it, takes 43% from the Sucker Punch. That tells me that he is uh, not defensive and that my Entei can knock him out with an E speed. So the Montreal Habsols are going to grab game one uh, in a 2-0 fashion against Baby Eric, who was probably the most threatening uh, player in our pool, honestly, and he had a really scary team. I wasn't too confident against it until I actually had our uh, our mock match between me and Jar, and then I realized that my matchup wasn't that bad. So, that's the game, guys. We do take it 2-0. Uh, if you did enjoy, make sure to leave a like down below. Subscribe if you haven't already, if you're cheering us on, if you want to see more of these games, any, any of that good stuff, and I will catch you guys later. Ciao!